Most of you are probably aware that the FIFA 20 Team of the Year just dropped a couple days ago, I think. And I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to tell you my own Team of the Year. So who I think, not necessarily who I think should have made the exclusive one for FIFA. Um, I'm just going to say, well, yeah, mine. If it was up to me. So just kind of a quick disclaimer. These little graphics of the cards, these aren't like... If they made it team of the year, I just use their team of the year card. If they didn't, I just change the background. I'm not trying to like edit their stats or anything. I just want to show a uh, uniform portrayal. And by that, I mean just a portrayal picture of the player, which can be the same on everyone. And I think FIFA cards are a great way to do that. So now let's actually start the video. So goalkeeper, I went ahead with Allison. I mean, he plays for Liverpool. You might see a lot of bias in this video. Depends how I look on it, look at it. But Allison, I think, I mean, won the Champions League very close to the Premier League, um, Golden Glove Copa America, Champions League, UEFA Goalkeeper of the Year, nominated for Ballon d'Or. I just think um, he had great individual performances, great team performances, saved Liverpool with that save against Napoli. So I think well deserved. Not really much of a question, but I did. You might see the bottom of the screen. Mark Andre Ter Stegen on Barca, another good goalkeeper. I just don't think he um, did as well as Allison this season. Left back Andrew Robertson, another one I don't think too much debate about. I mean, got loads of assists, really good individual team player for Liverpool. Played a key role in the Champions League in, in their really good Premier League campaign over the season and scored a couple goals. I just think not very debatable. Center back Virgil van Dijk, another one hands down. He almost won the Ballon d'Or, Champions League. Nobody dribbled by him in a single season. Um, That's just phenomenal. Like almost unreal. UEFA player of the year, men's um, best defender possibly ever. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves because he hasn't been at Liverpool that many seasons. In the first 99 rated defender on FIFA, and I know I wasn't going to talk about the FIFA aspect, but I think that is also quite impressive. The other center back, Kalidou Koulibaly, he didn't really win a um, ton of trophies, but um, I just think if you just isolate him as a player, forget his team, um, he's just a really good center back, really strong, um, strong build, and good tackles, doesn't let too many people get by him. And I know I said to isolate him as a player, but Senegal, I mean, made the final at AFCON, lost to Algeria, who are a strong side, so that's a pretty fair campaign. Right back, Trent Alexander-Arnold. This one may be a little tougher than the left back. I went with Hosho Kimmich as a runner-up, and a lot of people are saying they think TEA might have gotten it over Kimmich because TEA has gone kind of the holding mid role a little bit this season. I have seen a couple of people say that. Um, like I was watching this Masterbooks video and he said that. But also I think TAA, of course, he had that amazing, amazing corner <laughs> against Barca. Very clever. But you can't just you can't just focus on that, even though it was amazing. He got loads and loads of assists in the Premier League. Scored a couple of goals. Just got Premier League Player of the Month. And there's this insane stat. He he needs like 30 something assists in his next 400 something games, and he'll have most assists Premier League history, or um, I think it was Paul Scholes, yeah, him, his um, current record. So yeah, great player, great team player, um, really does bits for the attackers and the defense, and I just think, yeah, really well deserved. Holy made Jordan Henderson, so maybe the most controversial yet, a lot of you might say the most biased, so the thing is, running up on Golo Conte. I understand Conte's um, really good player, but I feel like, I don't know, I just, um, I feel like he's been slightly diminishing in the past couple of years, which I really hate to say because I do kind of love Conte as a player, really nice person as well, but I think kind of it's time we shift our focus a little off him as a holding mid. I mean, his Chelsea side, I know we can't just focus on teams, but his Chelsea side didn't really do a ton, won the Europa League. But I feel like, I don't know, what if, what Conte, he's still a great midfielder this year, but I feel like just what we've seen in the past is not as great. And Jordan Henderson, I think, 
he had a really impressive Champions League campaign. Really reestablished himself. Captain Liverpool to the Champions League. Um, fought through, really fought for this moment for his whole career. So I think he deserves it. And also his performance this year. I mean, you just watch any of his games. His long balls are maybe some of the best in the game. Really target pinpoint precision accuracy. And I just think really good holding mid sets a lot of stuff up with his holding role. Scored that good goal against Spurs, so he still scores sometimes, but not really part of his role. So I just think, you know, he sticks to his role and just pretty well deserved, I think. Gino Wijnaldum, another one that some people might think are slightly controversial. I think Wijnaldum, like Henderson, also really reestablished himself at the club. If you don't know what I mean by that, it's kind of like... It's almost like their roles are in jeopardy. They're bringing all these new midfielders that, with the likes of Fabino, I mean Keita, Chikiri even, Oscar's just fitting in. So their roles at the club were kind of not like as guaranteed as they have been in the past. I think Wijnaldum, I mean I just remember him scoring that goal against Spurs a couple weeks into the season last season and thinking, wow, he didn't score a lot, but over time and time he's kept getting more and more goals. Really good team player, can set a lot of stuff up. He kind of goes unnoticed. Very brilliant in the Champions League. I mean, he was a key part in Liverpool's comeback against Barca. And I just think overall, he kind of has it all as a center mid. And that's why I threw him in here. Center mid, Frankie de Jong. I mean, started off at Ajax. Ajax had, like, what some people might call a fairy tale run. We got all the way to the semis where they were um, slashed out by Lucas Moura and Spurs. I mean,. I actually had a really good run in Frankie De Jong. I don't think they would have gone that far without Frankie De Jong, him and Delict. And he did make the real team of the year. Most of these players did, but not really what I'm focusing on. I feel like he's just a really, really skillful player. And his dribbling is really good. I think he can also set a lot of stuff up. I feel like he's kind of an anchor in the midfield. The players can revolve around him. He can also go ahead and set something up. Just a really good all around midfielder in my book. Left wing Sadio Mane, runner up Aiden Hazard. I mean, Hazard, I feel like I um, was going to mention this with De Jong. I feel like De Jong is brilliant at Ajax. I feel like Barca, he's still kind of finding his groove, but I feel like that'll just come with time. He's adapting to a new league, new country, new teammate, new atmosphere, new approach to his football. And I feel like he's also young, has tons of potential in time. I feel like Hazard isn't really fitting in at Real. I mean, same thing, he's kind of fitting in. But Hazard is, isn't, is like, a prospect of uh, people would consider De Jong. So, I don't... I mean, I think it will be a little harder for him, possibly. Um, Mane, brilliant, brilliant player. I mean, got Premier League Golden Boot, shared it with two other players. Key part in Liverpool's campaign. Just one African player of the year. Um, maybe might win Premier League Player of the Year. Strong favorite. A lot of people think that. Um, and yeah, made it to the AFCON final. Pretty solid. Just scored a ton of goals. Sets a lot of stuff up. I think I just think he's a really good kind of unique forward. He can also help out in defense. Kind of scrappy, but still control game. Really good all around. I think. Robert Lewandowski as striker, runner-up Ronaldo. The thing about Ronaldo, of course, I think you have to give him lots and lots of respect of what he's done over the years. Truly, truly great players, one of the legends, of course, but this all goes without saying. I just feel like him in this season, and why a lot of people think he's kind of losing his touch, is he's had pockets and pockets of really good form and scoring incredible goals, even setting some stuff up, which we haven't seen a ton in the past. And I just think that he, to make team of the year, he kind of has to keep it consistently throughout the entire year. I mean, he won the Nations League, but let's be honest, that's not too great of a deal. And like I said, I f just feel like his form's a little inconsistent. On the other hand, Robert Lewandowski scoring, scoring streaks through the roof, goals every week in, week out. I know he's in Bundesliga, but he keeps it up in the Champions League, hat trick after hat trick, and he's on the older side of strikers, which people are not really expecting a striker like him to do that. Um, plays well for his national team, kind of in the spotlight there. I just think he's a really good player, really like a goal happy striker at the minute. Will this form kind of dwindle, and will we not see him in this place next season? Maybe, but I think I think he's here to stay.
for the time being. Right wing Lionel Messi. Ron up Raheem Sterling. Sterling, I mean, Sterling... Everyone's saying how he might be in his prime, and I think that kind of started around the spring, maybe... Like, the year of qualifiers, I remember he did really well against Czech Republic, that first qualifier for England. Um, he's been doing really well for England, not just that game. He's been doing well for City, scoring goal after goal, hat-tricks. A couple hat-tricks, had a great start to the season, great end to the season. I just feel like he kind of, kind of like Ronaldo, pockets a good form. And his goals are, like, good, but I feel like Messi, I mean, his goals are kind of masterclass. I don't know how much time he does have left. Um... So, Messi might not make a ton more team in the years, but I feel like he's still doing really well. I mean, he kind of balled out of every competition, but as an individual player, um, every other game, every game now and then, he might be out of form. But I feel like overall, he still got it, but I don't know, his time might be up soon. Raheem's still really young, so this could flip next year, but... For now, I just think Messi is a really brilliant player, and I like Ren I think Ronaldo. Um, I like Ronaldo more, so it's really saying something. So it wouldn't be a uh, alternate team related video if we do results in the end. I just do this together. So club results: Liverpool seven players. A lot of you might call me biased, but I think I gave some pretty fair reasoning for each one. I also gave runners up: Barca two players, De Jong, Messi, and then Napoli and Bayern one player each. And then nationality results, this one more balanced, not like too lenient towards another. I mean, it's a two difference between the highest and the lowest. I mean, Netherlands, three players, that's De Jong, Van Dijk, Wijnaldum, really strong club. I think maybe a fair candidate for the Euros. And just looking at the England flag, remind me, Henderson also just got England Men's Player of the Year. Think about that squad depth, think about all they've achieved. I think that's a really great honor, another reason why I threw in there. So England had two players with, um... DA and Henderson. Senegal too, kind of surprising. You wouldn't, like, Senegal, they have good players. Overall, their national team is the greatest, so you wouldn't really expect them to kind of be as in this as they are, if that makes sense. But, um, yeah, two players from them. Then Argentina, Scotland, Brazil, Poland, one each, one all. Kind of, kind of, I mean, Brazil only one. You wouldn't really expect that, but you kind of look at each position. You really have to get into the fine nitty-gritty logistics of it it does make sense actually i think just allison i mean not a ton of other positions brazil are a great team to get me wrong but i feel like they're kind of um good in every position and some of these countries are kind of like world class in one or two but not quite with others so there's a certain certain formula to these so that's gonna be it for the video hope you enjoyed it um drop a like if you did and yeah see you in the next one